financial analysis, uh, after I've looked at the management and uh, business model and everything, it doesn't mean that you go and look at, you go and invest in that company. You, see, you still need to look at the financial help, health of that company. So you say financial analysis is sort of them same equally. You know, someone can be talking a lot, but their company is not making any revenue or they're still exploring how to monetize that business. So you need to know that finan financial analysis, uh, basically uh, companies are centered around assets. Yeah, so, so assets are what we should be looking at when we look at companies first. But I would say that accounting is a storytelling framework that revolves around assets. Because today, even before you start doing anything in a company, you need assets. Are we together? You need assets because you'll use those assets to serve your customers. So you need those assets first, and we need to understand from today onwards that accounting is a storytelling framework. It's not what the business is all about, but it helps us to understand the business. So that's where you should be understanding. Yeah, so what is going on here is that you need to understand that the accounting will help us understand this business uh, from certain grouping so is it doing well in terms of assets what are the liabilities what are what is the equity uh what are the expenses what are the revenue yeah so so that should be something that you need to understand so financially speaking a business has got only five things and abojani and cdsc has simplified this for you so please today aren't you if you are not aware about this i like using this a lot uh, some people joke to me with it, but it's known as relax. You know, financially speaking, a business has got only five things. So that is revenue, equity, liabilities, assets, and expenses. So you just need to write down there, relax. So once you understand these five thing, things, then it becomes much easier for you to understand the story of a business. You can understand what revenue is and how much did the company of interest generate in terms of revenue. Also, you can understand what equity is, what liability is, what assets are, and what expenses are. So like you've said, a, a business starts with assets and how they are funded. So the fundings can be in two ways. It can be from investors, which is known as equity, and it can also be from financials like banks, uh, known as creditors. And you should know that a business is actually in its own, it owns nothing. It has obligations to other people. So when you invest in Safaricom or KCB, you are an investor and KCB as a company has an obligation to you as a shareholder to serve you. That's why you have a voice when they have annual uh, general meetings. Uh, and also when they get some loans, they have an obligation to pay back that loan. And uh, there are two activities in a business. So they can be value generating, which is revenue. And they can also be expenses, which are value sacrificing. We would not like in expenses, but basically you sacrifice value to generate value. That's why we pay our employees. That's why we pay our suppliers because they're giving us something that enables us to offer value to our customers. Then those customers pay. And one thing that I want us to understand from today onward is that revenue is not money. So I've been preaching this a lot to SMEs and even corporates that revenue is not money. Why? because you can offer value now and you get paid later is that true so i can offer value and i'll be paid later so let me know from the chat if that is true so it said yes i've booked revenues of 10 million yes so because of that revenue is not necessarily money it is money depending on how you get paid if you don't have airtime for safaricom we'll just tell you paul Sana. sorry please you have insufficient airtime. So that is prepaid business. But for postpaid, know that sometimes you can even do a business worth 15 million and you'll never get paid. Has that ever happened to you that you did some work and you never got paid? So you said, actually last month I generated 10, but that money never came or they just paid part of it. Yes, so because of that, please understand that and look at the financial and see, ask the company questions. What are your plans to collect receivables, which is revenue that has been generated but not paid? So if it is too high, ask them, why, how comes, uh, what can you do on your business to have at least some prepaid model? And the other thing is, is that in terms of asset recognition, uh, not all assets can be recognized accounting-wise because accounting looks at control and measurability. So some things like brand, Safaricom brand might be zero from the financial statements or even the value that the CEO brings. So that's an unfortunate thing, but it can let you know that 
it is impossible to capture all the value of a company uh, on its financial statements. Like the number of customers, whether they are 40 million, the value might be zero on the financial statements. Yeah, so I want someone to read for us. So based on what you looked at, uh, the understanding that the balance sheet now is basically assets and how they are funded. So that's what you start with even before you make a shilling in terms of revenue, because you have to set up an office or you set up a business name, you know, you'll be spending money already even before making money. So, uh, but that covers three things in a business, assets and how they are funded. So can someone read for us what a balance sheet is? You can raise your hand and uh, Steven will give you. We'll unmute you. Please go ahead. The, the, the balance sheet or the statement of financial position describes the assets of the financial entity and how they are funded using liabilities and equity. Yeah, next. Next, please. Someone read for us the income statement. What is it? So the income statement also known as the profit and loss statement describes the activities that grew or shrunk the value of assets and obligations. Um, that is liabilities and capital. Yeah, so thank you very much. Uh, so, so basically you can see that you need to understand those five items that you've talked about. And then from there is when you come to the financial statement. So basically the income statement talks about only two things revenues and expenses, but it's important to understand the accounting, that accounting groups these items in a way that is very easy for us to understand. Then under a certain subunit, under revenue, you might have subunits, like for Safaricom, you might have voice, you know, data, uh, fixed data, mobile data, and things like that. So it's important now to know that the grouping is actually what makes financial statements readable for people who are in, not involved in the day, to day running of companies. And you can clearly see that the cash flow statement this depends on how you get paid or how you get value from others. If you are a corporate, your staff can use Uber or Little, then you pay at the end of the month. So it will be, a, it will be an expense or a liability, but you will not pay it. But if it is prepaid, it means that the money will go immediately. So you need to understand the cash flow. It really depends on how you are making your payments or how you get paid. So practically, this is an example of uh, uh, just the framework that you've used, uh, where you need to know that when you are starting a business, you need assets. So you use your money to buy assets, but where will you get it? Sources of funds. So two sources of funds for the balance sheet, they're usually liabilities and equity. So liabilities, like in this case, uh, for EABL, for the financial year ended June, 2022, uh, they had liabilities of 84 billion and equity stood at 26.4 billion. And in the previous year, it was about 14 billion. So you can see those growth. So when it grows, it means that the shareholder, technically in the financial world, uh, they are getting more value. The value of the company is growing. Then this is the assets. So assets and how they are funded, that is basically the balance sheet. So it should be that simple if you are an unfinanced background person to understand that is all about assets and how they are funded. Then in terms of activities, like you said, you have two activities, generation of value and sacrificing of value. Generation of value is what we call revenue. So for EABL, uh, they have what we call gross sales. And then under that, you have, have the different expenses. So they pay a lot of taxes. You have indirect taxes. Uh, direct cost is how they get their product into the market. Admin cost, they're for day-to-day -day running of the company. They've given us here sales and distribution at the expenses. Finance cost, probably they have a bond or they have some loan. So you need to check that from the annual report. And then they also pay corporation tax, which is known as income tax. And the total expenses, including taxes, stood at 178 billion and revenue was 100 and 93 billion. So probably you didn't know that EABL made uh, that amount in terms of gross sales. And then after all the taxes and expenses, the net income was 15.7 billion. And then from there, they paid a dividend of 11 Kenya shillings per share, total dividend. So dividend is part of 
why we are here so we can earn either from capital gains or dividends. So it's important for you to understand. We've come from business analysis, financial analysis, we'll show you the health of the company. So, and you can compare the previous year, the last five years and 10, and it should be something that's, that's logical and that makes sense for you. For you. Yeah, so, so that's financial analysis in a nutshell. Uh, so you can look at different companies, their financial statements and see what is, what is there and try to do sort of a trend in the past few years. So uh, any reactions on the financial analysis before you go to valuations? So, so for valuations today, I just want to look at a simple case uh, where I'll be using what we've looked at today. Uh, the value that you can have in a company is what we call equity or obligation to shareholders. So that is what you can lay a claim on when it comes to a company. So, so, so you can't go to KCB, for example, and claim that since you have some shares, they should give you a share there. No, the way to get value is through dividends or the share price going up and you selling. So you need to know that. But you need to know what is the value of one share of KCB today, KCB today as per its financial statements. So you have KCB and Jubilee. So give me a name from the chat where you can practically look at valuation. So just a simple framework. So we'll, we'll be going deep in the future sessions, but today is just to give you a high level overview on how to uh, start from scratch until being able to see if it is worth investing in a company. Okay, so, wow. So there's a lot of love here for Jubilee. So Steve, give me a name, which was the first company to be mentioned there. Okay, so, so we'll go with KCB. Okay, Steve says Jubilee, so that's okay. So like you said, we'll have revenue, then we have uh, expenses. So like you say, we have revenue equity. So remember, relax. So equity is the obligation to shareholders. Then we have uh, liabilities. then assets, and finally, expenses. So, so what, what concerns us is total equity of Jubilee company, because that is the obligation to shareholders. That's what you can lay a claim on. So I'll quickly go to their website. So you can uh, go there practically. So under that, you'll find that you have financial statements. So look at the recent one, which is half year, and look at what they said was their total equity. So banks call that shareholder funds. Some companies such as Centum, they'll say net asset value, but basically is the obligation that the company has to its shareholders. So what do you have here when you look at uh, Jubilee? What was the total equity as at June 2022? Can someone tell us? So how much is, is it? So type on the chart. So it's important based on those five items. No, no, Edwin, uh, check again. Check, check, Edwin. Total equity, we are looking at this one here. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So that was 44.8 billion. So thank you. So Edwin, check again. So that is 44.8 billion. So this is the net value of Jubilee that shareholders can lay a claim on. So how do you get the value of one share? So you have CMA statistical bulletin that we talked about. And in that report, you can get the total issued shares, like all the shares of Jubilee that have a claim on that 44 billion. So from there, we can get the value of one share of Jubilee based on its financials. So that is based on its financials. So today we are just going to look at that basic way of analyzing, but in the subsequent sessions, 
we look at the more sophisticated ways of valuation. So it's always good to start from unknown to unknown. Yeah, so you can look at Jubilee. So this report is very good. You can write uh, it down. So here we have uh, a table that shows total total issued shares. So these are the shares that can lay a claim on the 44 billion. So if you are a Jubilee shareholder, you own part of the There, I can see there are 72 million. Let me just go back. So I hope you are clear. The total issued share for Jubilee shares are 72 billion. So 72 million. So total issued shares are 72 million. So uh, total equity, also known as book value. So that's the value of Jubilee according to its financials. That's 44 billion so what would be the value of one share says so 44 billion divided by 72 million so 72 million is like 0 0.072 billion for it to be easy for us to divide so if you do that you'll have so sorry so you have uh, So, so, so 72 million is 0 0.072. Then take 44 billion divided by the number of issued shares to get the value of one share. Yeah, so how much is it according to its financials? Anyone on the chat? So that's how you get the value of one share of Jubilee based on its financials. So how much is the value of share as per its financials? So that's the easiest way to value a company. We'd be looking at the most sophisticated ones in future. So again, you can do the same for KCB. Go to its uh, recent reports. Look at the. Sometimes it can be called shareholder funds. Shareholder funds. So basically, that's what shareholders can lay a claim on. Uh, it can be called total equity or just equity. It can be called book value. But then to get total number of shares that can lay a claim on that value, you go to CMA Statistical Bulletin Report. So it's 622. So that's the value of Jubilee Holdings as per its financials. So what was the share price today for those who have access to that information? So usually available also on the NSC website. So it's 200. So do you think Jubilee's holding is uh, undervalued or overvalued by the stock market? So in its financials, yeah. So that is just an example, but you need to have looked at what uh, business analysis, look at all the items, how it makes money, the sector, competitive analysis, you know, competitive advantage. Then you go to financial analysis, see if the financial statements make sense for the last five to 10 years. Then finally go to valuation. If that makes sense for you, then you can make a decision of investing in that company. So you can do the same for different companies but in future we look at why we use different valuation methods for different companies and sometimes you can even discount so we can talk about that but this is just a layman's view that at least as per their financials uh they are valued at uh, valued at x but the stock market currently undervalues it so that's just an example so you can do that for a few banks uh probably can check on kcb equity but you look at uh more details in the future uh, sessions. So, so this is an example uh, of again the another strategy. So you, you can look at companies that are undervalued, but again you can look at a company's financial statements and see that is undervalued and it is still growing and you find that they are paying good dividends. So sometimes we have people who want uh, certain companies to pay good dividends, but usually I say you have to align with the market. Look at, for example, what are some of the companies that pay good dividends. So first you need to again look at business analysis, management align analysis, financial analysis, if it makes sense and the company is undervalued and it pays a good dividend from a yield po point of view, like you can see here, then you might invest there for dividend sake. So it's very, very important for you to align 
uh, don't just invest because of dividends. You might invest in dividends, but the company is not doing well. So I hope you can see this list. Uh, so, so that is an example of dividend companies. And it's important for you to just realize that uh, when you want to invest in companies that pay good dividends, uh, look at the options that are available, but please start to the business analysis, financial analysis, valuation, before you look at dividend. Just Don't just invest for the sake of dividends.